Musical theater is a form of theater combining music, songs, spoken dialogue, and dance. Musical theater works, usually referred to as musicals, are performed around the world. They may be presented in large venues such as Bid budget West End and Broadway theater productions, or in smaller off-Broadway or regional productions, on tour, or by amateur groups in schools, theaters, and other informal stages. Before the 20th century, there were three types of theatrical performances with music. The first was opera. Operas are long and dramatic. They are almost always sung completely through with no spoken dialogue. The plots were usually based on classical mythology or historic events. Opera was considered cultured, something for the wealthy class. There was also operetta, which was basically a short, light-hearted opera. Melodies were usually very bright and catchy, with fast-paced, funny lyrics to match. Finally, the most popular type of musical theater was vaudeville. Vaudeville didn't have a plot, but was instead a mix of songs, dances, and short comic sketches. In 1907, a man named Florence Ziegfeld staged a show called the Ziegfeld Follies. His vision was to create a more glamorous, high-class version of vaudeville. It was a hit. Many actors, dancers, and composers got their big break working for the Ziegfeld Follies. One composer, Jerome Kern, teamed up with Oscar Hammerstein II. Together they created a totally new kind of musical theater experience. The first musical, a show in which all the music and singing are used to develop the characters and advance the plot. It was called Showboat, following the lives of performers and stagehands on a Mississippi River showboat. The show opened in 1927. Critics and audiences raved. In 1935, not long after Showboat, another groundbreaking musical opened on Broadway. Porgy and Bess brought together elements of jazz and African-American folk music. The show had an almost entirely black cast and tells the story of a disabled man in love with a woman who wants to leave the slum where they live. It's hailed by many critics as a musical masterpiece of the 20th century. Composer Richard Rodgers and lyricist Oscar Hammerstein II are considered the most famous musical theater team in American history. In 1943, they took Broadway by storm with Oklahoma. It was a love story set in the early 1900s, when Oklahoma was a vast frontier and not yet a state. At the time the show opened, the country was fighting in World War II. Oklahoma made Americans feel optimistic and proud of their country. Rodgers and Hammerstein went on to write some of the greatest musicals of all time, including The Sound of Music and The King and I. Although their shows were known for their memorable songs, many pushed boundaries in terms of subject matter and character development. Today, many theater historians and fans consider this the golden age of the American musical. As audiences grew and theater became more popular, the types of shows that were being created changed too. The show Hair made its debut in 1967. Considered the first rock musical, the show was very different from what audiences were used to seeing. Written during the Vietnam War, Hair is about young hippies who look toward music to find escape and peace. At the time, this was very controversial. The show was seen as anti-American because it went against the values of conservative people who were for the war in Vietnam and against the idea of free love. Before I 
six, seven, a few years later, in 1975, a chorus line opened on Broadway. This show, too, was a game changer. Actors played characters auditioning for an unseen director. Each character tells about their life and what made them want to be in show business. A chorus line was nominated for 12 Tony Awards and helped change the way people thought of what a musical could and should be. The 1980s saw lots of big hits, especially must-see shows like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. Much of the world became entranced by these big, splashy productions. They were created by a composer named Andrew Lloyd Webber. It was in 1982 that his musical Cats became an international hit. The production didn't close for 18 years. The Phantom of the Opera opened on Broadway in 1988 and is still running today. The story is about a mysterious man who lurks in the basement of the Paris Opera House. This is now the longest running Broadway musical in history. By the mid-1990s, Disney arrived on Broadway. Beauty and the Beast opened in 1994, soon followed by The Lion King in 1997. A relatively unknown director, Julie Taymor, brought the world of The Lion King to life in ways that had never before been imagined on a Broadway stage. Actors wore costumes that mimicked the movement of animals. Some used beautifully handmade puppets to depict the animal characters in the show. Another historic musical of the 90s was Rent. A young man named Jonathan Larson wrote about what his life had been like in Manhattan's East Village neighborhood. Larson addressed many taboo topics from HIV and AIDS to lack of respect from the police. Currently, the Broadway landscape is a combination of many different types of shows. There's the box office breaking Wicked, the story of two witches in Oz who go from enemies to friends, and Dear Evan Hansen, a show about a boy with a social anxiety disorder. But indisputably, the reigning leader of Broadway is Hamilton. A young composer named Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the book, lyrics, and music for the show and starred in the title role of Alexander Hamilton. The story of Hamilton's rise from a penniless immigrant to the first secretary of the treasury is told through rap and hip-hop. The show won 11 Tony Awards and received the Pulitzer Prize in drama. The original cast recording also went on to win a Grammy Award. Hamilton broke all box office records, regularly grossing over $3 million a week. Tickets would sell out more than a year in advance. Today, the Broadway theaters in New York alone have more than 13 million attendees each year, generating over $1.4 billion dollars. With live theater, no two performances are exactly the same. The cast and the audience come together to experience something very unique and special. The power of a thrilling show is the reason why this art form has been around for centuries and will remain for centuries to come. But what does it actually look like inside of a theater? 
let's check out behind the scenes at the National Theatre of London to see how they make the magic happen. Welcome to the National Theatre. Let's go inside and have a look around. Before actors go on stage, they change into their costumes in a dressing room, like this one. Their dressing room is also a place they can relax between the afternoon show, called the matinee, and the evening show. Before a play is shown to an audience, the actors need to rehearse, and they do that here, in the rehearsal room. It's where everyone in the company gets to know each other and works out what they're going to be doing on stage. This is Drum Road, the pathway that connects all the backstage workshops. One of the special things about the National Theatre is that almost everything you see on stage has been made right here in this building. This is the metal workshop. It's where they make metal frames for the sets so that they're strong enough to carry all the weight of lots of people and objects. Next is the carpentry workshop, where the wooden parts of the set are built. Every play has a designer and a director who tell the workshop teams what they want the set to look like. The workshop teams then figure out how to make those ideas a reality. After the different parts of the set have been made, they're put together. The team here might be making anything, a giant table, an army tank, a boat, or a whole house. This is where the scenic artists work. They're the very last people to work on the scenery before it goes onto the stage. They draw, paint, and add texture to help the audience believe in the world they see on stage. This is the props workshop. These skilled craftspeople are expert makers. They can build furniture, puppets, pretend food, statues. The range is endless. Here, in the costume department, they make everything an actor wears on stage, including wigs and masks. The costume makers have to make sure everything a character wears is just right for the time period and setting of the play. Many actors say they don't really feel like their character until they have their costume on, so that first fitting is really important. As we approach the stage, you'll see the Deputy Stage Manager. It's her job to cue everyone working on the show, telling actors when to go on, and the technical teams when to change the lights and play the sound effects. After all this hard work, it's finally time to take to the stage. This is the Olivier Theatre, and it seats over 1,000 people. Imagine how it must feel to step out and perform on this stage. 